NPI brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, for making this segment possible. It's from Analog Devices. Yes. And Return on MPI Spotlight. We've done Analog Devices. And well, now, yeah, this is actually a Maxim part, but Analog Devices and Maxim merge. So it's Analog Devices slash Maxim, but picked one logo. Um, so this week, we're going to be talking about the Max 777. 8, 9, and 8, 7 chips. Um, they're, this is so hot off the press, there aren't even photos of the chip. It's in the middle of this eval board uh, there. And this is an all-in-one power management chip that can do um, USB Type-C power delivery syncing, um, buck charging of a large battery pack, and then boosting back up to 5.1-ish volts. Uh, so let's talk about what this is. So uh, in the days before, in the dark ages, we had um power packs you know plug into your wall wall warts and you'd have to pick different dc jacks you see like you know there's like six different jack types 2.1 1.3 0 0.9 and um you'd have to get the polarity right and then you could select the voltages like this is a selectable one but usually you don't get to select the voltages um and this caused a lot of problems because people uh would plug in the wrong voltage so you had to protect against that and then also you wouldn't have the right amount of current available um and basically you ended up uh lugging around from apartment to apartment gigantic boxes of power bricks because you can never remember which one went to which and if you threw it out you're like i'm never going to get it again um last few years we have been working as engineers to try to replace those power bricks with usb type c so uh, here's a USB Type-C laptop slash uh, tablet slash phone charger that can you know, charge almost every device. Uh, and you see on the output, it can do 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts. This is a nice, chunky power supply. It can do up to 60, uh, like 65 watts, 20 volts at 3.25 uh, amps. So you can, you can power a small laptop, a big tablet, um, any kind of phone, any kind of watch. Any device from the house. So ideally people would use this and the USB-C cable um, to charge their devices. And you know, we're we're starting to see that. I'm starting to see more devices. Uh, here's like a power delivery sync chip that can talk to um, your power delivery uh, source, the wall wart, and say, hey, I want 12 volts at two amps, and it will get that voltage. Um, so whether you need a low voltage or high voltage, whatever something in between up to 20 volts, you can get it. And this has been great for, um, you know, your devices that you're buying from your laptops to GPSs to mobile phones, et cetera. But um, there's other devices that could benefit from this. Here's say a USB power pack. Uh, probably everyone has one of these. This is a pretty chunky one. Um, there's uh, three ports, two USB-A outputs and one micro USB input. Um, in this case, you know, you can charge this pack. It takes a couple hours because you can only draw maybe an amp from the 5 volt power supply to charge the, I think, 6,000 or 8,000 milliamp hour battery inside. Um, and then you can supply two 5 volt, one or two amp outputs. But, you know, a lot of stuff uh, these days, even like this overhead that we're, you know, we use has a built in battery. A lot of devices have very large built in lithium ion, lithium polymer, you know, lithium uh, cobalt batteries. You need to charge them. And once you get to like 2000 milliamp hours or larger, um, it's very hard to charge them over a five volt power supply because, you know, let's say you first off, most five volt power supplies aren't going to give you two plus amps. USB is only going to max out at one amp. Um, but even if you did want to draw that much current, let's say you had a power supply that did five volt, two and a half amps, um, the two and a half amps across the cable is going to give you a drop that might make your charger not be able to sync the full amount of current because you sync 2.5 uh, amps, you know, you have a 0.1 ohm um, resistance to your cable, both directions, now you've dropped about 0.2 volts. You know, maybe the power supply droops also, so now you're getting close to 4.5 volts, uh, not enough headroom to charge your uh, LiPoly battery. Um, considering all the other dropouts you might have with, uh, you know, your transistors and your chips and, you know, sensor resistors, et cetera. And so uh, if you want to charge really big battery packs, ones in tablets, ones in phones, um, uh, large phones, laptops, and other big devices, 
you're going to want something that can um, charge at three amps and get you higher voltages. But again, you don't want to have that special power pack uh, with a special DC plug that just gets lost. Thus, the analog devices slash Maxim Max 77789 and its friend, the 7787. They're like sisters. They're fraternal twins. Um, this one is the standalone version, can do three amp charging over USB type C. So it will request from the USB type C power delivery source up to 12 volts, which is nice because then again, if you're drawing three amps, if you droop from 15, you know, 12 volts, um, okay, now it droops one amp or whatever, you still have 12 volts uh, to buck down to uh, charge your battery. Three amps, you can easily quick charge in an hour or two a very, very chunky uh, battery. And then it also has a boost converter so it can generate uh, reverse boost from that battery. It can generate 5.1 volts up to 1.5 amps. So handy if you're making those battery packs or if you're just doing a using a device and it needs um, a boost converter as well. So this is the standalone version, the 89. There's also the 87. Looks very similar, but this one has I squared C control. Um, so um, use whichever one makes more sense for your you know setup. They're both pretty autonomous, but then you can you know, configure them uh, for how much current, the floating voltage, uh, whether you want the boost converter on, etc. So this is the block diagram. Um, this is the standalone version. So the standalone version, um, you see, it connects over USB C. It uses the CC pins, and those are used for power delivery. It also connects to DP and D and the differential data pins. And the reason it does that is there's pre-USB-C, there are some power supplies that use the data pins to communicate um, uh, how to configure and get the higher voltages. I think it's called BC 1.2, so it's pre-USB-C. Um, you have the uh, one inductor that's used for both buck from the USB-C down to charging the battery up to three amps. And that inductor is also used to boost up to V-System, which uh, can be up to 5.1 volts, 1.5 amps out. There's also, uh, yeah, so the, for the configuration, you know, there's a bunch of pins and resistors. You can set uh, the different voltages and different currents. And then, um, you know, whether you want to buck, boost, buck, boost, both, you know, on the go, um, detection mode, all that good stuff. Um, this is the I squared C version, the 89, very, very similar, um, same overall functionality, except instead of setting the state and, uh, floating voltages and currents with resistors, you have, um, I squared C connectivity, um, both still have, uh, LEDs that indicate status. So it's kind of handy with the I squared C version, you have a register map, all the same functionality, but of course it's, you know, you're not using resistors, so you can customize it on the fly as needed, but you have to have a microcontroller. So if you're making a basic battery pack um, or something that's standalone, you know, you're, uh, let's say you are making an electric drill, you want to have charging, USB-C charging of the drill power pack, uh, you'd use a standalone because maybe you don't have a microcontroller in there, um, but you have something like a tablet or a phone or another smart device, you have a microcontroller anyways, or a microcomputer, you might as well do the configuration over I squared C. Um, usage is pretty simple. Um, you know, it's got, uh, current limiting, um, and overcurrent protection. It's meant for big batteries, but you know, you could use it for smaller ones. Just set the, the current limiting to a lot lower. Um, uh, I think it also has multiple different float, uh, voltages available from 1.4.1 up to like 4.4. I know that depending on your cathodes, um, I, I tend to only use lithium polymers, but I know that other batteries have up to 4.4 volt floating. So it will support those, you know, whatever uh, battery type you use, uh, but only single cell, by the way, it will not do 7.2 volt. It'll only do 3.7, you know, 4.2 approximate uh, single cell lithium rechargeable batteries. Um, yes. Yeah, so it does a uh, USB-C detection with the CC pin. It will, you know, automatically configure to get um, the most power available um to charge i think it'll probably try to get higher voltages because again uh, less droop over the power supply 
it also does this BC 1.2 detection. I mean, I, I've personally I've never really used this, but I think this has to do with the resistors that Apple used to use for their um, pre USB C pre lightning um, power uh, charging cables, where they use resistor dividers to indicate. Um, like light resistors to indicate to the device how much current is available. Um, I know that this also, the chip also has the ability to detect when the voltage is starting to droop a little bit too much. It will um, uh, lean off how much current it's trying to uh, source from the power supply so it doesn't get into like, you know, a uh, voltage current collapsing cycle. If you do use the data pins for uh, detection of that BC 1.2. Uh, they do recommend, I think it was the Max 4809, uh, is a switch you can use to uh, select who gets access to the uh, data pins, whether it's your mic controller for native USB support or this charger chip. Eh, honestly, I think probably best to leave them disconnected and just use, use USB Type C, but um, looks like they have the capability available to add both. So uh, you choose which one you want. Um, only downside for me at least is that it's a bga 0.4 millimeter pitch so you will need to um i'll show you the layout you'll need to have uh pad uh via in pad so you're gonna have to use you know a, a fairly not advanced but uh not the cheapest pcb you could get on the market um, in order to handle it i think four layer boards as well are going to be um needed this is the recommended layout so you'll see some of those pins on the inside, the um, the setting pins, not the power pins. You do have to go through the pad and down um, to another layer to get them out. So there are other chips in this generic family, not like this particular 87 or 89, that come in like a QFN style package, not quite QFN, but QFN-like. Uh, so if you don't want to deal with BGA, there are other Max, you know, look for DigiKey Max 777, you can see the rest of the family um, maybe doesn't have quite the current capability or like all the configurability, um, but it's available in a non BGA. Meltdown DigiK. It's in stock, 16,000 of them. You can absolutely get these. So check this out. This is the 89, but again, there's also the 87, depending on whether you want I squared C configuration or standalone. And that's on MPI this week. Hi, on MPI.